Welcome back to another episode, and uh, it is a beautiful. You would you would think it was spring. It is like 50 degree, 55. I don't know, 50. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it is 54 degrees right now, and uh, it is a beautiful day outside. Beautiful day. So, as you guys know, we do have the Evo 10 back on the uh, the trailer and the transmission is out so there's two things i need to really do and i need to drain it and i need to wrap it and it's got to go out so today i'm going to show you guys exactly because i'm going to show you guys exactly what to do whenever you need to ship this bad boy out because uh i had no idea oh well, hopefully you guys can see me uh i had no idea and uh i had to ask a bunch of people on the interwebs to figure it all out but uh, now I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it and what's actually necessary. So let me get my camera set up. Let me, uh, I'm just gonna drain my, uh, my transmission because that's something I just have not done yet. Uh, I'll drain the transmission. Make sure you do that. Drain all three spot, spots uh, where the uh, transmission fluid goes. And then uh, I'll cut back when we, get, uh, when we get everything ready to go. So, uh, yeah, give me one second. All right, people, so I have uh, my transmission is just, uh, transmission is just sitting here on the uh, thing. So if you have no idea how this works, there is a little eye here at the very top that you can crane your transmission up and uh, you can do everything that you need to do with it. As far as right now, I am draining it. And uh, as soon as I'm done with that, I will get everything that I need to wrap this bad boy up and I'll show you exactly how to do that. But one thing I definitely noticed, I, I'm draining all my fluids now. This was this is an empty bucket here, empty cat litter bucket. And I'm about, about here with the fluids. And uh, if you guys did not know how to drain, there is a drain plug here. The second one is here. And then the third one is here. So I'm gonna pull this last drain plug here. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how the fluid looks here. Now look at that fluid. Does that look like bad fluid to you? So this is the last of it, obviously. But as you can tell, it does not, does not look bad at all. So uh, I did keep up with my regular maintenance on this SST. It's just, like I said before, it was just about time. The car has over 200, 216,000 miles on it. And uh, I think that it, it was just it was just the time to go. So I don't know exactly how to see if these things are bad or not. But all I can tell you is that everything spins. Like that spins, that spins, that spins, and that spins. So I don't exactly know what's going on with it. Um, all I do know is that it, it was there was something wrong. It was something wrong. So. What I'm gonna do from now is uh, I'm gonna let the rest of this drain out. I'm gonna pull the, the filter, which is here. The filter housing is here. Uh, let all any, uh, any fluid out of that uh, go. And then uh, I will pull everything that I need to actually wrap this bad boy up for the third time. So uh, yeah, give me one second, be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, folks. So now that you have your transmission all drained of any fluid, the next thing that you're gonna need are the following here. A four pack of like cheap straps, but not super cheap. These are, uh, everything here is, well, this is from Harbor Freight. And uh, you're gonna get this uh, stretch wrap. You know, it's, it's supposed, it says high performance. So that's from Harbor Freight, that's from Harbor Freight. And uh, I got this pallet here. I got a long time ago because I did get a transmission for Sapphire. So the transmission in Sapphire came on this bad boy. It was uh, it was kind of like locked down with it. So uh, it's a pretty, a pretty sturdy pallet, you know what I mean? So you have the option here. There is options. So you can throw it on something like this, small pallet, uh, and then you could ship it like that, or you can buy a bigger pallet. The problem is, is that if you know uh, bigger pallets are, I think 36 by 48, something like that. No, maybe, I don't know. It's some weird dimension, um, but uh, I have a lot 
across the street from me is a, uh, a manufacturing warehouse, like small like roofing and stuff like that. And they deal with a lot of pallets. So uh, I can definitely go over across the street and uh, grab a pallet if I need to, but I don't think I'm gonna need that. Like I think this pallet here is big enough and I don't think that I'm gonna have any issues. So uh, I think I'm just gonna set the camera up and uh, we're just gonna go at it. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this bad boy in, set it down, strap it down, and then shrink wrap the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like we do have some edges and such that we don't want to get, uh, to get hurt and uh, damaged. So we're gonna do the best we can to go around all the, the sharp edges and uh the top here so uh yeah i think that's i think that's really it so uh yeah like i said before i'm just going to get my camera strap it down and uh we're gonna go for this so let's go people so as you can tell i threw a little cardboard box here uh and my father-in-law kind of scared crap out of me he just walked in the garage i didn't even hear him but uh most of the outside is protected here as you can see we still do have the shaky shakies so next thing we're gonna have to do is get grab these bad boy and uh so we have i think four i think i got a four pack and uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna strap these bad boys in and they're gonna go around the top here. So each one of these are gonna go through this little loop here. As soon as I get it, you're gonna go through this little loop and onto the other side. And that's how we're gonna strap this bad boy down. So I will set the camera up and what, what I'm gonna do, I'll just show you guys go underneath like this like this there you go and we're just gonna loop it like this somehow and get this thing tight yeah there it goes so and that will be our very first strap there uh, grab the other side and we're just gonna keep on strapping this bad boy down so give me a couple minutes here i'll set the camera up and uh we'll keep it going Okay, people, so uh, I know it's a little weird to see, but uh, it looks like I'm pretty good over here. I have this bad boy strapped down and uh, it is definitely not, definitely not going anywhere, that's for sure. I used three of them and uh, I, think it, I think it looks really good, really good. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, Let's figure out a way to get it on this pallet here or this rolling dolly and uh it'll be the easiest way to transport this thing inside and out of a truck uh i do have my truck i do have a way to get it to a depot or whatnot but uh yeah let me let me see if i can't get this bad boy onto a dolly for one second so give me one second be right back all right ladies and gentle folk we are all finished up with this video let me show you what we got here. Now, the reason why I put this bad boy on a dolly, one, so I can move it around. 
with no problem. And two, I can actually pick this bad boy up with my cherry picker and I could throw it in my truck. So when I say that, uh, right now I can't really get underneath this pallet because it is not a regular pallet. Well, it is a small pallet, but the feet for the, the cherry picker can go slide right underneath. I can pull my truck right back, let the tailgate down, and uh, I can maneuver the cherry picker with the transmission on this little mini pallet into my truck. And then we can go off to uh, wherever that you're gonna, you know, like get this thing shipped from and to. So, when I say that, I mean, I've already picked a carrier RNL uh, transportation or whatever, um, or, uh, or FedEx. So I have a FedEx hub right next to me. So it's cheaper to go RNL, uh, but RNL is about an hour to an hour and a half away from me. FedEx is really close, like, 10 minutes away from my house, a major hub. So it'll be easier for me just to stick this in my truck and then have it picked up from FedEx at their hub. So uh, all you really need to do is let your tailgate down. They'll go right in with their forklift, take it right off, sign your paperwork, off to wherever it's gonna go for you to have it rebuilt. So at this point in time, I have not figured out which uh, you know which place I'm gonna go to to actually get this bad boy done because uh, there are some pros and cons with each one now mind you I'm not looking for something that goes 600 horsepower so uh, you know I know cosmic makes really really good stuff and so does Jax so those are the two manufacturers well two rebuilders that I'm looking at right now and uh, as you know the Evo 10 is not anything super crazy it's got an intercooler it's got a cat bag exhaust uh, intake and blow off valve. That's that's literally it. Uh, and a fuel pump. And a fuel pump. Um, so nothing too crazy with the Evo 10 at all. So it is really going to be a, a spirited driver. So there's no point in putting something crazy like a 600 horsepower pack uh, in to my car if if I don't really need it all. You know what I mean? Or if it would be overkill for the setup that i'm going for because it's really not going to go any further than that i'm just trying to utilize the the ability that stock turbo can do so as you guys know from a long 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 time ago uh if you guys watch my channel the evo 10 here only made 298 to 300 on stock engine stock turbo and the mods that i got the reason for that was is because when i finally got it to the dyno uh it already had a hundred and I don't know, 70, 180, 190K, somewhere around there. And I already knew second gear was already on its way out. So uh, with that being said, buying a, uh, you know, a transmission with uh, upgraded clutches or even stock clutches would be ideal for me because I'm not trying to go for the, the world record here. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, I've yet to pick where I'm gonna go. So that's why I have this thing on a dolly right now. I'm gonna push it around and uh, I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna take it, how much it's gonna cost and how much shipping is gonna be because everything nowadays is gonna be way, way higher than you ever think. So uh, if you look on any website, anything like that, prices start, start at 20 whatever hundred dollars for a uh, a rebuild and that's not that's using your stock clutches in an mr uh sst so uh it is going to be a very expensive deal but uh what are my options here i can't really sell the evo 10 it is a fantastic daily uh i won't i won't get anything for it it's got 210,000 miles on it so i'm just going to leave it as a good solid daily when i pick the transmission that i want um it has been good to me up until now, so might as well hold on to it, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, this is why I'm gonna leave this video. Uh, if you guys like the content, or, or if this helped you, because I know that it, uh, I, I looked all around and I could not find anything like this, you know what I mean? So a uh, couple things that, like, like I said before, you're gonna need, uh, you know, your shrink wrap, your straps, and some type of pallet or something like that. 
and then you'll be off to the races. But uh, yeah, if you like this content and it helped you in any way, shape, or form, please think about subscribing, maybe throw me a like, that'd be greatly appreciated. And if you don't like it, throw it down in the comments. Let me know how you didn't like it, what, what I do wrong, you know what I mean? Uh, I'd greatly appreciate all the uh, constructive criticism. But uh, until then, I will see you guys next time. Deuces.